it's me, the teenage boy version of Tom Ritchie. So I was going through my regular research, you know, about history, and I began asking myself, what is it that makes it difficult to learn history? So I embarked on this long journey with lots of research, asking different people within my school, what makes it difficult to learn history? I ended up creating this elaborate and very reliable pie chart that tells you what makes it hard to learn history. The only thing that looks of relevance here is geography and years and numbers. So that's what I'm going to dedicate myself to do today. I'm going to go over through some of the different uses that numbers have in history, which includes years, Roman numerals, and other different things regarding dating and... No, no, not that kind of name. Get, get, get that out of here. What year is it? Uh, it was brand new. No. What year is it? Before I get into the idea about years and finding historical dating, I first have to go through the idea of the calendar. There are so many different calendars you can't imagine. And each calendar actually has a different year at this time. For example, the calendar that most people use at this time, the Gregorian calendar, is in the 2000s, while the Islamic calendar is in the 1400s. The Hebrew calendar is in like the 5700s, and the Chinese calendar is in the 4700s. So as you can see, they are very different. Another way calendars can be different is because of the way they measure time. Most calendars can be divided around four different categories. There's first solar calendars, which use the sun in order to determine months and years. Some examples can be the calendar we use now, the Gregorian calendar. First, there was also the Roman calendar from like the Roman Republic times, which also was a solar calendar. After this came the Julian calendar, who was which one was installed by Julius Caesar. There was some problems with that one. The main problem was that the Julian calendar was bigger by this much. So that's not a lot, but after years and years of passing by, there started to be a, ch a shift in time. And that's when the Pope Gregory the Thirteenth installed the Gregorian calendar, named after him. Uh, another calendar that's a solar one, which you might be interested in knowing, is the Soviet calendar. Next, you have lunar calendars, which are actually shorter than, than solar calendars because they are mo only based on the phases of the moon. A new moon means a new month. And this makes the this, these kind of calendars about 11 days shorter than a solar calendar. The most relevant examples are the Syrian calendar and the Islamic, also known as the Muslim or the Hijri calendar. There are also lunisolar calendars, which are a mix of both solar and lunar calendars, trying to keep up with both the solar cycle and the lunar cycle. There's a lot of examples, but the most well known is the traditional Chinese calendar, the one with the wheel having the years being represented by animals. From this calendar derive a lot of calendars along East, East Asia, such as the Korean or the Japanese, but there are also several others, such as the Hebrew calendar. The Incas also used to use a lunisolar calendar and the traditional Hindu and Buddhist calendars. The last type of calendar I'm going to talk about is the fixed calendar. These calendars never have days or months added in. They always stay the same amount. Some examples are the ancient Egyptian calendar from the Middle Kingdom Egypt, the Zoroastrian calendar from modern day Iran, and the Aztec and Mayan calendar. Speaking of which, oh man, I just love how people always confuse these. Especially the time when there was that 2012 end of the world hysteria. People were always telling you the Mayans are saying that the world was going to end. And they were showing you a picture of the Aztec calendar. I mean, ugh, come on. This might clear up the confusion. Now that we're done with the calendar stuff, we're going to go over how to read a timeline. So here is a basic outline of what your average timeline will look like. There are a few things that we have to notice that all timelines will have. First of all, there is no year 0. Year 1 BC is followed by year 1 AD. You can also see that this calendar uses BC and AD, Anno Domini, which means in the year of our Lord. This is more mostly used for Christian calendars. Of course, people that are not religious will instead use BCE and CE, 
which means the same thing. So the year 2013 BC is the same thing as 2013 BCE. Another important thing that this timeline lacks is a title. The title tells you what the timeline is about and it tells you what years it spans. Now I'm going to show you two examples of real timelines. Our first example as the title shows, it's a timeline of video games. Notice how the entire timeline is divided into different time periods, which in this case are called generations, something which I will briefly go over in a while. Next we have a timeline about the history of the computer. Take note on how every event has a title, the year in which the event happened, and a little description or some extra information about the event. And sometimes, like in these two timelines that I just showed, there is pictures. Okay, now that I talked about timelines, I'm going to talk about something related to timelines, periodization. This is just a fancy way of saying how the past can be divided into different time periods, eras, or as we saw in the timeline of video games, generations. The first timeline uses eras, which are many times used by historians, and are mostly based on how civilizations developed during those times. Now this timeline is one based on ages of technology. This is the one that's mainly used by archaeologists, which you can see causes a little bit of problems because as you can see there is nothing in the very right. Well, well honestly in my opinion I would have put the industrial age and the computer age somewhere around here. There you go, perfect. Uh, except it isn't. The thing is, you cannot have periodization without stumbling into two major problems. First of all, periodization has a tendency of overgeneralizing history. The second problem sometimes relates to the first one. You see, when history is overgeneralized, sometimes it tends to focus on just one region or one place. Here's a really good example. In an average high school world history class, how often do you hear about Canada, New Zealand, or Australia? <laughs> Sorry about that Australia, Canada, and New Zealand, but I promise that you will not be forgotten in my videos. Mark my words. We want the numbers, Mason. That's all we've ever wanted. This next section, to be honest, it's called random because I honestly didn't have a way to put it. The things here are in a way going to help you in history. First of all, we're starting off with uh, sometimes how, his how history or years can be divided. So a decade... Hopefully you know this, it's 10 years. A score is 20 years. A century is 100 years. And a millennium is 1,000 years. Hopefully that's basic, you already know that. And if not, now you know. Oh, and before moving on, here's a problem that I should address because people get confused more than they should about it. How come when talking about the 16th century, we're talking about the 1500s and not the 1600s? That's why I made this kind of little chart so you could uh, avoid that mistake. First of all, look at the second century, you're working towards the year 200, which is the reason why the years of that century are between 100 and 200. Or you could also think about it as this way, the third century ends in the year 300, which means that the third century is talking about the years 200 through 300 because the, year, the century ends at the year 300. Or if you kind of just want to make it easy on yourself. Just remember to subtract 100 years from every century you're given up. So, oh, you're given about the 6th century. Just subtract 100 years. Okay, you're talking about the 500s. 500 all the way to 600. Oh, now you wish you paid more attention in your math class, don't you? Don't think of um, using years in history as like having to remember what every single year of an event. You just gotta remember that this can be a tool to help you remember the order in which events happen. For example, I know exactly that World War II started in 1939 and ended in 1945. With that, it could help me to remember, oh, I gotta remember that World War I happened before that. Knowing the exact date of some event can help you essentially figure out where another event that you've never heard of be put in historical context, whether it goes before or after. The numbers, Mason. What do they mean? Now, before I wrap up, I need to have a little discussion about Roman numerals. Now, I know most of you are probably gonna be saying, Roman numerals? I don't need to know Roman numerals, I barely even see them around. Well, let me tell you one thing. Do you know what number that is of the Super Bowl? Exactly. Roman numerals have appeared in books, movies, and even video games. But for our purposes, history, you need to know them because they appear in monuments and because of the names of kings. 
In terms of memorizing, you really only have to remember these seven numbers and what do they mean. Once you get these down, there's three things that you need to keep in mind when looking at Roman numerals. Most of the time, you'll see these numerals being ordered from biggest to smallest, which means you have to add them, such as the example here shown, Roman numeral 12. However, sometimes the smaller numeral goes before the bigger one. In this case, like the Roman numeral 4 shows it, you'll have to subtract. This in turn leads me to my third point. You will never see four of the same Roman numerals consecutively. This is the reason why the number 4 is not written by four number ones put together, but by a 1 followed by a Roman numeral 5. There are more stuff regarding Roman numerals, but I'm not going to talk about them. First of all, because I only wanted you to know the basics. Second of all, because this is relevant history, not relevant math. And third of all, because I'm running out of time already and I should probably end this video right now. I hope you found this information useful and that you learned something. And until next time, keep making history.